Mm -hmm. Personal compensation will pay that other tax. Yeah. City and schools on both of them. Good evening, everyone. We're going to start tonight with the uh, tax levy hearing, and then follow. We'll open up. Thank you, Dr. Mayor. Good evening. Thank you. Our tax um, levy hearing is a little bit different this year. And I Yes. yes, you do. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, because of the Hancock Amendment, and the Hancock Amendment requires the um, requires the state to lower our tax rate ceiling because the, the law says that we must remain revenue neutral, meaning we can only take in a certain amount, a certain percentage of revenue over what we took over last year. So what that means then is our district increased by about 17% in our valuation. And I know a lot of you had your property reassessed and are very well aware that um, those, those suffered, well not suffered, those um, experienced an increase. So because Marshall's tax rate was lowered then, we are not going to be able to set our tax rate at what it usually is. We are required by the state to lower our tax levy to the point where we can only we can only take in a certain amount over what we took in last year. So the rate then is a result of the Hancock Amendment and it will cause, it will cause us to be unable to tax or to substantially raise individuals' taxes in the community. And I know I've had a couple emails from people saying, we're on a fixed income, we can't afford more taxes. Well, you're not going to have more taxes from the school. The school is reducing their tax. So the way it actually works out is that rather than spending $3.12 per hundred of assessed valuation, taxpayers are only going to be paying $2.83 this year. So the amendment then keeps school districts from increasing and, and giving large tax increases to the taxpayers. So if you can look here, you will see this is the comparison of this year's tax year and to last year's. Our total valuation increased rather substantially, in fact, about 17%. And that percentage is too much for the Hancock Amendment not to kick in. However, our real estate increased by almost 29 million. Personal property increased by about six million. So the assessed valuation of our community went up, it increased by about $34 million. The tax rate ceiling, however, decreased 29 cents. That 29 cents equals about $600,000. That if, if there was no such thing as the Hancock Amendment, then we would be bringing in 600,000 more. But the Hancock Amendment keeps everything revenue neutral. As you can see then here, we are going to, I'm going to recommend to the board to set the tax rate at what the ceiling is that the state auditor has given us. And the state auditor has given us a ceiling of $2.8316. Two point eight three one six would be the tax rate that I have to recommend to the board. That will generate almost six million dollars in taxes for the school, which actually, once again, it is down it, about a difference of six hundred thousand from what it would be if the Hancock Amendment had not kicked in. However, we are going to be increasing our revenues from our local taxes by $276,449.20. Here's a, a comparison of the last five years, and you can see then that 
the gains or losses have always been right around the two or three million dollar mark. This year, it was right at the $34 million mark. I don't know what happened there. I don't know how it is that our um, valuation went up that much, but that's, that's the case this year. So that is the end of my presentation. Actually, I'll move on to my superintendent's report later, but I do recommend that the board approve the tax levy of 2.8316. After hearing the information from Dr. Mayor, I need to uh, entertain a motion for us to set our tax levy for the upcoming school year. No, sir. Comments from the public are requested and submitted usually in, in, in a before form for us here at the school district. The city does take comments from the public as they walk in and as they stand in. So, Can't yes, sir. So. Well, you're, you're welcome to email or talk to us prior, sir, and then you are welcome to come in and speak with us or to speak in front of the, the body at that point in time. Is there a motion about the tax levy? So moved. I made a motion. So the tax levy number is given to us by the state auditor's office of what we can have by a ceiling. I understand what you're saying, sir, that you feel like you ought to be able to input on that. Is there a second to the motion on the floor? I second. All those in favor of setting the tax rate at 2.8316. Please say so by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? Now I need to uh, make a motion to adjourn to the regular meeting. So move. So move. Is there a second to that? Dr. Mayor said my taxes. Sir, I'm not recognizing you for a public comment at this time. Thank you. I would move on, otherwise he's going to talking. Did I tell you your taxes would not go up? You just said that in your report. Oh, that's not, not what she said, but that's not what okay. she said. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry about that. That's sorry about your said. personal situation. We had 100,000 more people that paid $400,000 more. Mm -hmm. I need a second to the motion to adjourn to regular second. session. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'd now like to recognize Boy Scout Troop 42, who's going to be presenting the colors tonight <coughs> and leading us in the pledge. Thank you for your time.
No, that one. No, the guy with the mask. No, 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 no. I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Johnson and the scouts from uh, Group uh, uh, True yes. 42. Thank you all and have a good Thank you very much. Are those Marshall students? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. They represent our district so well. Tell them thank you. We're very proud of them. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving down the agenda for the evening. Okay. I need to look for approval of the minutes from the July 20th meeting, the July 31st retreat. August 17th special board meeting and August 20th special board meeting um, over the last couple of weeks. These were all included in your packet. Are there any additions or corrections? I make a motion we accept. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, next, moving down, looking at the Approval for the August bills that totaled one million one hundred fifty-four thousand five hundred sixty-five dollars and sixty-three cents. I have one question. On what you sent us today, Linda, mm -hmm. that, are those just additions to the bills? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. The the cracks, uh, resealing Spain Hour parking lot. Is yes. that? That's this on the end? back here, yeah. Okay. We had a, so that in that flood, I had a bit of a problem. It wa tried washing out that box back there. Okay. So he <clears throat> he dug some out, packed some back in, packed some asphalt. He's going to come back and do some concrete work uh, before he finishes painting. I got two other bids for that. He was the <coughs> lowest locally. It didn't cross the 15, so I didn't officially bring it in front of sure. the bid. Mm -hmm. I just had to get that work done. So sure. Yeah, they did a great job. Make sure it wasn't something. No, it's back here. They did a great job. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions? Do we need to make sure we get that in the minutes, what he just said? We will. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't hear what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being I need a motion, no. Mr. Harper. I need, still need a motion for the acceptance of the bills. <laughs> to only one million one hundred thousand plus. I thought I had a question, but I can't find it. Um, Whatever you said needs to go. Oh, okay. I'm prepared. I'm sorry. Did she say come prepare? Make sure you come prepare. Are you serious? I'm, I'm, I'm stopping. But come on. Um, I'm good. I'm good. There's still no motion. And you have time to vote? Well, by the time I get to it, you guys still have time to question. Already voted, so. We still have time to question before the vote as well. Yeah. I'll make a motion we accept. Second it. Is there any discussion? Slants are you No. I have a note in here, but I can't find it. It's fine. Surely somebody else would have seen it. Yes. All those in favor of uh, the paying of the August bills, aye. please say aye. so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstains? In your packet, there is also the monthly finance report. Hopefully, are there any questions about the monthly finance report from anyone? It continues to look very, very good. I mean, I've watched those numbers pretty closely. It continues mm -hmm. to look very good, considering last year and mm -hmm. the payments that were projected versus what we received and now how that's continued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those that's, numbers continue to, nice. to be better. pleasantly surprising, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much better than we expected. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to accept the finance reports with the positive notations? So move. <laughs> Second. Second by Mr. Shepard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Or abstaining? Thank you. Um, next, I need approval of the annual secretary of the board report. That was about uh, 19 to 20 pages of our packet as well. That was a very detailed and lengthy report. It's always a fun read. Thank you. Any motion to accept that? I'll move that we accept that, the secretary report. Second by Mr. Smith. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yeah, we got it. I need a motion then to adopt the agenda for the remainder of the meeting. That includes the reports from the 
assistant superintendent, superintendent, uh, the special reports that were in your packet, of course. I'm going to be discussing the board retreat briefly, and then uh, the new business action items under number 10. I'm not aware of any other additions. Matt, did you want to put that other one on? We did talk about substitute pay, it's on there. and it is on there listed under Part C under new business. I move we adopt the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? <clears throat> Dr. Lorenz. Um, just have some updates for you this morning. My first day of school was hectic and exciting all at the same time. So um, uh, just some updates. The first lift of the asphalt is nearly down on the track. Um, the grass is growing in nicely. Uh, we're working to get bids to our insurance for the lost damage from the floods damage at central office in the culinary. Still working on that. Still working with our insurance agent and the culinary and central office. The <clears throat> elevator, boilers, and cameras are installed at Beaker. Um, just this afternoon, the chiller, the chiller at Beaker, which we have on our list to get updated, but I was hoping I could steal six months to let some of this other stuff get away, but we'll see what tomorrow brings. But the chiller at Beaker's having issues again. I've, I've, it's had issues a number of years in a row. So we're looking at, I'm, uh, we'll be bidding that new chiller later this fall once I get the scope of work complete. I'll put that out for bid and get that in front of you. Um, due to the supply chain issues, um, yeah. we've had yeah. issues all over with different projects this summer, but the, if I hadn't told you, the walk-in cooler freezers for here at Spainhower and at MHS uh, will not be arriving until late October. There was a foam panel issue. They couldn't get them, but everything else is ready as soon as those panels get in, I guess. Uh, the HVAC system at Eastwood is about 50% complete. <clears throat> we left the window units in that, in that building for this very reason, because we weren't sure, and he had some parts issues. Um, they got most of the, the, what I would say, the dirty work, got most of the holes punched through, and most of the, unit, of the units are set. Um, they should be able to come back now nights and weekends, or if we have breaks, and pick them off a room at a time. We won't be bringing those window units out until all the systems are up and functional, so. Um, we, had some <clears throat> we had some technical difficulty uh, today with the, new, with the transportation uh, software uh, transfinder that we put in. Um, that uh, it, uh, it runs in conjunction with our SIS program, and there was some kinks that we didn't anticipate uh, as far as alternate addresses for pickups, which caused a ripple across the whole system. So um, we mm -hmm. hope to have that worked out in the next couple of days. How many students were negatively impacted on that? Do you have a rough um, Huh? There was quite a few. There was quite a few. Heard it was, heard it was a disaster. So. Yeah, it was. It was. We were working hard right through it, and had people on the phone trying to get us technical advice, and um, both sides of the coin, sys and transfinder, and. So if people didn't get their bus passes at this point, if they don't have them as of today, what is the recommendation from the district on how they get make sure that they are set up and prepared for transportation? So Dr. Mayor sent an email out to okay. ask everyone to. Uh, if there's any way possible to uh, drop off and pick up your students for the next few days. Um, I know Craig's over there working on it right now. We've been working on it since this morning, since I just, sunrise. I just wanted a blanket statement for parents and families if they happen to tune in tonight to get some advice, uh -huh. that we give that in this public forum if we can. I, I, don't have any, um, I don't have any concrete um, information to give you as far as the bus pass yet. I'll okay. be talking to Craig right after this meeting's over. Um, as soon as we get get it worked out and, and it's lined out, uh, we'll be pushing that out. Can they be looking for that versus be, I know that we're limited on numbers of text or whatever, but maybe can we make sure that that goes out in text alerts? We send a ton of those out. Maybe we could do that about transportation. Yeah. As soon uh, as it, possible. If I, if I have, as soon as I have breaking news, we'll okay. get it pushed out there. Please. So Th that would be helpful, I think, for families yes. that are struggling. And I'll, like I said, I'll be in contact okay. with uh, transportation director just as soon as this meeting's over so okay thanks and I know and they've been working hard and yeah, it's, I'm sure and I understand sure it's, it's been chaos, difficulty for everybody um, I appreciate everybody I appreciate everyone's patience um, first day of school is always a little bit um, uh, a little challenging to begin with and then we mm -hmm. tossed that in the middle of that and that didn't that didn't help things so thank you for your patience um, stay with us we will technology is a great thing when it's working great and when it's not it's not yep. For sure. So uh, we will we will get it worked out as soon as humanly possible. Is there anything we can do to assist you in any way? Otherwise, uh, you guys just have to solve we, the problem. We, I, 
we, we, are in, we are in the solution stage right now. We just have to get it. We, we basically have to go back and rework the whole, the whole route and the whole, okay. the whole, the whole diam, diametric of the whole thing has to be reworked. I mean, I could show up and drive, you know, pick kids up or something in my car or something. <laughs> Probably against so, the law. Again, ap apologies for, for the miss. We thought we had it. We thought the software was work, and it just it, it just didn't do what we were expecting it to do, and we will get to the bottom of it. And in the end, it'll be it'll be good, but it's just going to take us a little bit longer than we thought. So all right. that, that's all I have, unless you have any questions. Trailers? Um, I'm, I'm hope, uh, no, they're still on their way out. Um, I saw them Sunday. I went, oh. You know, they're still, the, when the, the gentleman originally told me that he thought he could get them out by before school started, but there was a problem getting a driver. But he called me about a week ago or so and so assured me that he was still getting them, but it was just going to take him a little bit longer than he anticipated. Well, I just so. didn't want him to change his mind. <laughs> yes. Do we, do we have an expected date when the buildings are cleared? Um, I don't know the expected date. I would anticipate that they'll be working right in through winter and spring. Uh, I w I'm hopeful that by next summer, uh, they're down. They, they've they went a long way, but they have a lot of there's a lot of volume yet to to move. They they did come up here to this end to get it farther away from our our student drop off, trying to work their way back towards the back. So um, they've got all the all this down below down, and um, they've started hauling rock to to fill. DNRs let them using that to fill back here in this down in this big valley. So that helps cuts out on the transportation of the rock pieces. Of course, the metal and everything else has to be shipped off site, but um, they, they, um, th it's moving along at a pretty good pace. So well, I, I'd hope like to thank the city council yes. and everyone involved in that for getting on it. I totally um, agree. I do appreciate it. So yeah. hopefully and someday we'll have a nice, beautiful school for our kids. Yeah, no, I, I have to concur with that. The city's mm -hmm. done a monstrous job of yes, getting them in there and getting them moving. And they, uh, actually they, um, they helped accelerate the process a little bit here about two weeks ago. Um, we were moving along at a, at a bit of a clip, but then now we're moving on at a better clip, so. Is there any impact with sound, with all the uh, rubble and the kids' classrooms on that end? Not of that I've, when I'm here, I don't notice it. I mean, I'm not here all the time, all day, but uh, both of these buildings are well insulated and good thick brick walls, so. Um, and that's the other reason why they're trying to get this, this one closest down. one to us, and it's pretty well down there. They're just uh, picking it apart and, and scrapping it out. So yeah, I've Sunday, talked to a few I, teachers as well, and they've uh, given me that same feeling that it's not good. interrupting or impacting their classes. So. Yeah, I, I came up Sunday, was watching it, and of course I had my truck and drove down and about never got turned around down at yeah. the end there because they were doing the blacktop down there. So and I blocked off. And a lot of times, nights and weekends, it's it's I'm quite a, a viewer's point down the road here. Everybody. I would like a nicer, wider road someday in the future. Yeah. Any other questions for me? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. T. Dr. Mayor. Thank you. I have um, several requests from board members for information. Um, can you all see the screen? Yeah, but you better get a microphone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first time I've ever been told that I need to talk louder. Well, someone at home might want to hear you. <laughs> I did um, get in touch with a number of superintendents today, and uh, I heard from all of them. I did not hear from Sedalia, but it seems like everyone has raised their, their pay for um, substitute teachers. If they were at 90 last year, they've gone to 100 this year. Etc. Um, Sweet Springs is at fifteen dollars an hour, which I believe is right at whatever that is times seven point seven five. Um, so we are still paying right now. We are still paying eighty five dollars a day here in Marshall. So I would like to recommend that we do raise our substitute teacher pay from eighty five to a hundred dollars a day and from $100 for long-term subs to 115 a day. Um, I believe that will keep us competitive with other districts. I think that this is probably something that we're going to have to review maybe even more than once a year. But right now, I, this is my recommendation. 
I'd like you to tell the listeners at home about how hard it is to find them and keep them. It is very hard to find substitute teachers. And so if anyone is interested out there in becoming a substitute teacher, there is a great need for, for subs. You do have to way. have 60 college hours, but um, we really do need substitute teachers. And this is not just something in Marshall. It is nationwide. It goes along with the teacher shortage, but um, it's, it's to the critical point. And so hopefully this year we won't have um, absences like we have had. I, um, I, I, I don't know, that's uncharted water, but um, it is a critical, critical need for our district. So Sweet Springs, it, Sweet Springs is 15 an hour, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. that's 116.25 a day. For the regular subs. So that puts a 16, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They are the, the highest paid in the yeah. area. Okay. If you would like to apply to be a substitute teacher, <laughs> please call the central office and Stacy will be happy to help you do that. We had started last year with, because of the sub shortage, um, we have lots of teachers, especially in the high school it seems, who substitute for other teachers uh, during the day. They give up their planning hour or some of their lunch period. We um, decided last year to begin paying them at $15 an hour for when they did give up their planning time. And I am suggesting that we continue to do that this year. I don't believe that the motion last year had an end date. So um, I, I'm just recommending that we continue that that practice. I, I really appreciate those. That's hard to do, to go all day long without a planning hour. So they do a great job when they fill in for their colleagues. As you know, transportation, um, we, as I said to you before, and as you well know, we did transition to a new system. Um, transportation <laughs> received some wrong information from the people who set up that system. We had some, um, as we do every first day, some conflicting information. Uh, this had to be corrected manually, and that's what Craig has been doing all day today. Hope, very hopefully, we are on the way to um, a much better day tomorrow. But I, like Dr. Lorenz, do thank the pe people of Marshall for being so patient. And even if they weren't patient, I understand. So we are working really hard to, to fix that. We would like to ask parents for the next few, for this week, if they would like to drop off and pick up their kids, um, it will avoid a long wait time. It will probably help the transportation department. If you can't do that, we understand. Um, but you may want to, I, I did have a few calls after school asking if the buses were late. Yes, they were late today, and no doubt they'll be late probably the rest of the week. We have talked recently about COVID leave for employees. Last year, the federal government granted sick days, 10 sick days for employees who tested positive or were quarantined because of COVID. At that ended the last day of the year, December 31st, and the district decided to continue that practice, give our teachers the rest of the days if they didn't use their 10 and pay for their sick days. The district um, paid about $111,000 for sick days last year. Um, I'm, I mean, I'll get back to that point in just a minute. But the Central Missouri Superintendents Group did um, conduct a survey amongst superintendents, and here are these results. The first question was, does your district plan to offer COVID leave <coughs> to employees who test positive for COVID-19? Districts, no, were 23 districts, yes, nine, and maybe seven. The next question was, does your district plan to offer COVID leave to employees who are placed on quarantine due to exposure to COVID-19? There were 27 districts who said no, five said yes, and there were seven that said they were still thinking about it. As I said last year, we did give right at $111,000 for sick uh, COVID days. This, this is not what was budgeted for teacher salaries or substitute salaries. It's just what the, the day's pay would have equaled. I wanted to talk a little bit about the, our ESSER funding. 
that yesterday was the deadline to get this um, application into the state, and I did get it in last Friday. Um, I talked to the teachers about this at the beginning of the, of the year. Just Was that only yesterday? That seems like it was two weeks ago. Um, yesterday, I talked to them about this, gave them this information, because I want to make sure that they know what, what the whole situation is with the district. Last year, we received money from the county and money from the federal government. And with that money, we put in new um, HVAC systems in Eastwood. We put a new heating system in Beaker. We're probably going to have to use some more money to put in a chiller. Air purifiers, we have, we have those for all buildings. We fixed the elevator at Beaker. We put cameras in at Beaker, and the walk-in coolers for the kitchens were paid last year. Um, also last year, these were made p possible. The electronic scrolling sign that's going to be at the central office, that will enhance communication with the public. I think it'll be a really good communication tool. Um, the purchase at the funeral home for a green space at Beaker was allowed through that funding. What wasn't funded was the football field and the track. We want to keep telling individuals over and over again that that was, that was not paid for. That was paid for by the lease purchase from about three years ago that we had saved that money um, and kept it for, for that expense. And For, we did, just to be clear, we did receive some insurance money on that. I believe that was totaled around 74000 Thank you, 75000 And then the in irrigation system was on us for about <laughs> 26000 So just, just wanted to make sure and everyone did, did realize that, that we the did file. Payment. Yes, yeah, we cleared that. Once Good. we got the last bit of grass down and I cleared that with him, he was bringing it towards us. Okay, good. Thanks, Brian. Yes, it's important to say that those projects were not paid through the ESSER funding but they were paid somewhat with our insurance. This year, we are looking at approximately 4.7 million in new federal funding. Um, that's a lot of money, but we do have a lot of needs and we're going to be able to provide our students with um, better, more and better programs that will hopefully accelerate learning and achievement. We are looking at, um, of course we had, let me back up. I wanted to tell you that we do have our plan on the website, and it is um, the plan that we had to, to um, present to DESE, and they had to approve for us to be able to receive these funds. It is, um, you can find it under Safe Return to School, one of the three tabs at the bottom, and it's 27 pages. So there's an executive uh, summary if you don't want to read all the 27 pages. That um, plan is going to be updated probably weekly. There's some information in there that I need to update right now, but it is available. The approximate budget, the one that I turned into DESE, and this is approximate, has about $3 million for teacher salaries, and that is to deliver student services before and after school, in the summer, possibly on Saturdays. It, it is all the programs that are outside of the regular day. We are going to plan to give our teachers a, um, about $50 an hour, which is double what we have given them in the past. Um, we feel that these programs will really help our kids and really help the community, and so we wanted to use a bu the bulk of that to um, be able to recoup that learning loss. We need buses, and we're going to buy some, and that this will help with social distancing also. We're going to buy two pre-K buses, two home school, uh, home school routes, and one for the activity bus. $120,000 120, now this is over three years, by the way. Um, we are, uh, this will pay for a full-time translator. We desperately need that in the district. That person would be located at Northwest with our ELL, our English as a Second Language program. Um, I, I think this will be a, a fabulous addition to, to the district. A full-time career counselor, the high school um, administration are very excited about how they are feeling towards their new offerings for our high school kids. 
They are focusing on careers and the future, which I think is a, a, a tremendous step. But that would be about 180000 over three years for a career counselor. Of course, if we are funding this with soft money, the soft money ends in three years. So we have to be really honest and tell our potential employees, we plan to pay you for three years. We hope we will pay you after that. But we can never guarantee anything when it comes to soft money. Student support programs and materials, um, $600,000 programs are very expensive. We're going to try to um, support our students who speak English as a second language much more, our students who live in poverty, and um, those, those programs are very expensive, but I'm really excited for the chance to offer them. We will continue to support professional development for our teachers and our administrators. The teachers through the PDC um, program through the State Department are going to receive about $100,000 this year. Over the next three years, I'd like to think about about $100,000 for um, the PLC focus specifically, at, which is the professional learning communities for our teachers and administrator professional growth also. I'd like to look into adult and student wellness programs on Saturdays. And um, I, that's going to take a little bit of um, money to convince teachers, I think, to, be, uh, to lead, a, lead that program on a Saturday. So there's 75,000, that's 25,000 for each year. Also then, um, as I said, the after school Saturday summer, the alternative programs, the teachers who work in those, I'm planning on paying them $50 an hour. Transportation will be provided for the non-regularly set scheduled learning experiences, the tutoring, the activities, the services. And whenever possible, we are going to blend our program with other community programs. For example, we have a meeting this Friday with the YMCA to talk to them about their after school programs and ours. We'd love to be able to blend those two programs. So that is my report for this evening. Are there questions? I have a concern. Yes. Uh, when the ESSER funds run out, you, you, you alluded to it, so you're well aware of it. It just, I don't know that investing in salaries and salaries and salaries that are going to run out on a short term is good fiscal responsibility. Can we not put that money into facilities and other kinds of things? Would it not be better spent rather than we've got to... <laughs> that, that is a good point. And we have to spend... 20% of our funds to recapture the learning loss. Yeah. But um, we can use more than, more than that, more than the salaries. And like I said, this, this is an approximate. But yeah. I had thought about the facilities and how we could use maybe two of that $3 million to work on improving our facilities. We absolutely could do that. And that's something I think that uh, the board and the district administration definitely need to talk about. Two million dollars over three years would go a long way in our facilities. Yeah, uh, that, it just at some point in time, of course, I won't be here when it happens. But then, three years, you're going to have a salary of this person, and you're either going to pick it up or dismiss them. You're gonna, and you're going to probably Correct. pick it up, and then another one, and another one. Right. But those are the things that concern me on it. Not that I, there's anything wrong with them, but th it concerns me that the next board, three years down the road, is going to have to fund these salary positions. Mm -hmm. yes. are, you, are you talking about right. the, the three million in the in the no, I'm talking recoup? About, You're I'm talking, talking about, about the one twenty and the one eighty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the for the translator and the career counselor. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is an issue. And it, it, it it's a concern rather than a one time expenditure on uh, chiller, you know. So, and I guess for me, Harry, I appreciate I appreciate that mm -hmm. thought. At the same time, I think if if we've got kids now, and I think we're going to hear about it in, coming up here pretty quick, but if we've got kids that are having issue being on track and um, excelling where we're at right now, this is where we're at today. And so, this is if <clears throat> if this is where we're at, and this is the concern we have, and we need to reach those kids over the next three years to get them 
graduating or or get him to the next step, then that's where we need to spend. I don't it, have maybe. any problem with that. I don't. I don't know. That after, would be my position. After too. school, summer school. Yeah. I, mean, I used to teach summer school all the time. That was some of. The, I had to go. Some of the I didn't best. Teach it. Some of the best things I <laughs> didn't have, unfortunately. But some of the best things I ever I ever did was during the summer. Yeah, I just I think that's that's my perspective on it is yeah. what do we need right now today to get us two three years yeah. from now. Yeah. yeah, and I agree with you like 1.5 million a year over the next three years is going to be a vacuum when you try to figure out how yeah. to fill that yeah. that fourth year whenever we get there. But as uh, Dr. Mayor was saying, and we know we've got a slide that's happened, we've got a loss that's happened, and to kind of recover that, we're going to have to beef things up for the next couple of years. None of this is set directly in stone, but. These are just some mm -hmm. points and some possibilities that we can have, some of which we even talked about at the retreat. I guarantee if we have a full-time translator for three years, we're not going to want to get the, or I, right. If, right. if I'm still on the board, I would not want to be given that position up. Right. We're, we're, we're going to find that 40000 probably in three years some kind of way, <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> yeah. that's a need right It's a now, need right? in our community, It's yes. been a need. Yes. Yeah. So we, we have needed that for, mm -hmm. what? Years. No, it's a need. Years. Mm -hmm. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments about uh, Dr. Do you pay report? for those services now? Yes. yes. Well, and, and we have people who volunteer their services also. Mm -hmm. All right. But yes, we do pay for so translation. part of that year's salary right there that we're already spending yep. mm -hmm. that you're going to save in your budget by using those ESSER funds. The, the 27 page report that is on our website has to be translated into Spanish. And I, <laughs> I can't remember how much that costs when we put the returning to learning plan, uh, but it it's substantial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have some additional program reports. CTA, Special Services Director, Director of Teacher, uh, Teaching and Learning as well. So, uh, Fallon, would you like to speak about the CTA tonight since you're here? Uh, if you'd like to come it was and grab the, mic. Sorry, grab the microphone, so that possibly, the that was over here. So everyone at home can make sure so we hear the update. <laughs> Hi, good evening. I'm Fallon Bozeller with CTA, Vice Pre uh, President of CTA. Um, so thank you for having us here tonight. Just wanted to report real quick. We had um, two CTA officers attend the leadership conference in July um, in person, and then two went virtually. Um, our second thing is the executive committee met August 3rd to go over MSTA membership forms and to discuss incentives to give out throughout the year. Um, we've seen a very successful initial membership drive so far this year, so we're pretty optimistic about our membership numbers. CTA gave out goodie bags to all of our new staff to the district at the welcome back meeting as well as today and throughout this week. Um, and we have some other goodies for them as well. And then also we set the schedule for the executive committee and general, general meetings for the year. So we've been pretty busy this month. Uh, and that's basically it. So thank you for your time. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Fallon. And for those that didn't hear at home, she's the vice president of the CTA, and the president of the CTA is Ms. Tanya Johnson, I believe. Tanya Johnson? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, special services director. Did anyone have any questions about the report uh, that Grace had submitted? Not going to have you come up and talk about it. Uh, we, we call on you quite often, so just wanted to give CTA a chance this evening. Thank Thorough you, Grace. As usual. <laughs> Uh, did anyone have any questions about the Director of Teaching and Learning report that was submitted as well by Ms. Jacoby? I didn't. Yeah. Very thorough report. Thank you. Uh, moving on to old business. So on July 31st, the Board of Education met for a retreat. Of course, with everyone's schedules, we had toyed with dates for about the last two months trying to get together to uh, meet, of course, before the pr principals came back mid-August to make sure that we had some direction to give them for looking at um, our strategic plan or where the board was looking at going in line with our board goals. Um, so, Matt, uh, Br Brian has the copies, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, he gave me some. Okay, sorry, I sorry. I, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I passed out the homework. I got uh, mine, Brian. On that data, Mr. Carroll was present, Ms. Lance, uh, Matt and myself. 
Uh, the other board members weren't able to attend. Uh, we had some input from uh, them that were given at the time as well, and we had a rather good discussion that day. We met one for one was about, on vacation somewhere, wasn't he? Yes. So we uh, Matt was with the baseball team, I believe, at the time. So Matt was there. Oh, oh no, Matt, Matt was at the board. Brad was at the board. Sorry, Brad was, Brad was, Brad was on vacation, <laughs> so can't keep track of where everybody goes. I'm so. the old one, Brian. Hang on there. Maybe I'm having memory memory loss. So, um, at the uh, retreat, of course, we met from uh, uh, about nine till about three thirty, four o'clock in the afternoon or so, and then I think uh, some of us even talked a little bit longer in uh, some smaller groups after that. Of course, not a quorum, just a small group <laughs> of two. So, um, so our goal one is that Marshall Public Schools will provide and maintain a safe and supportive environment that contributes to academic success, confidence, the well-being of students. Uh, we were looking at visualization of a, a new Spainhower campus. Of course, hopefully in the future, uh, we will look over here and we will actually see grass growing or dirt or not actually the buildings and the rubble that we're seeing now. So like um, the rubble. looking in the future, we've talked about possibly needing to have, of course, new buildings. We all know that our buildings are dated in the, uh, um, our newest building is 44 years old and the other ones go downhill from there to almost 100 years old. So we know that new construction needs to happen here in the district. Um, we talked at um, possibly putting a new elementary uh, building across from Spain Howard. Of course, these are things that are going to be needed to bring to the voters and have voter support. These can't be done without a tax levy. These can't be done without community support. Um, and possibly if we're looking at an elementary building, we talked about a, a two through five possibility of a building. So that would be grades two, three, four, and five. So you would start on this side of the road and then you would move to that side of the road. Um, for those who are concerned about parking, traffic, and all of those other things that have came up today and we've received calls and messages and seen about, um, the city is planning to widen our roads and help us with building new roads here. But with all the equipment moving out of the bricks, the things that are going on here with the deconstruction going down or the demolition, then building those roads was not feasible prior or firsthand, but after we get everything down and we have flat services to kind of change the layout of the campus as it is out here to make it more uh, streamlined to support for the district instead of being left over our um, remnants of what it used to be and used for in the past. So. Um, we want to make sure that we talk about the things that have been effective for us, highlight our successes, our efficiencies, um, and make sure that we publicize our vision out to the community um, and emphasize the diversity and the strength that we have in Marshall. We have a lot of sometimes small niche groups that are very active within their small niches, but to actually get them together to be more community-based, as Dr. Mayor was also talking about, you know, more adult learning, more partnerships, and to kind of strengthen the way that we are as not just a district, but as a town and as a um, overall body here. So goal number two was Marshall Public Schools will recruit, support, and retain highly effective and efficient teachers, staff, and leaders who find satisfaction in the workplace and are dedicated to the district's mission of excellence. Um, as we talked about multiple times, there is a teacher shortage. There is going to be probably even a greater teacher shortage going forward. Um, unfortunately, COVID has not left us. We are not free of that. Um, some of our older teachers who are near retirement or who are working past retirement or on 50-50 contracts are going to be looking probably towards retirement are being done with teaching altogether just for health and safety types of reasons. So we're gonna have to look at recruitment strategies, whether that's, you know, partnering with area colleges more, um, making sure that we are bringing in students to student teach here, and maybe they'll you know, stay with the district, showing them a good time and how good of a time you can have here in Marshall, and then they'll return back, hopefully, and stay with us. Um, continue to support our teachers through um, professional learning and to keep our budget at 1% or even higher moving forward so that we can keep that education, that innovation going on within the district and within those uh, around in the district. Goal three, uh, Marshall Public Schools will encourage the involvement of all students, families, school uh, employees, and taxpayers and work to maintain open communication and cooper cooperation across the community. Um, we're thinking about the things that we're doing some now and even more. Collaboration with the Marshall City Government and city leaders, you know, making I'm sure that we're meeting with the city council and seeing where their visions are and where our visions are and making those visions together. We're not that large of a community, so we have to lean on each other in order to get somewhere. So um, I've been participating with some meetings already with the city government, and hopefully those partnerships strengthen and we can continue those to be going forward. 
uh, collaborate with our area college. We do have a college here in town, of course, and to make sure that you know we're utilizing that to the best of our ability and for our students and as well for those coming into town because those are citizens of our town, even temporary or not. Those are people that we need to kind of include within our town and be able to see what we can actually get from them, the resources, the student work or the student power that we can get from them. Of course, we can always look at uh, having people come into the classrooms or other things, but just strengthening our partnerships and making sure that we're using um, all of our resources to the best that we can. And of course, we're going to have to look eventually at um, communications or some PR efforts. We're talking about um, increasing um, knowledge to the town or to the community of what's going on with the district is not just uh, an email process from the superintendent or information from, um, you know, a, uh, as a side duty from someone, but it's something that's going to actually be someone that we can push those information avenues out, that we can put on the campaigns, that we can put out to Canvas people, that we can figure out what exactly everyone wants and how we can get everyone working together on those things. So. Goal number four, Marshall Public Schools will be physically responsible with taxpayer money and include any willing community members in short and long-term decisions that are pertinent to the continual improvement in education opportunities in district families. Um, we're going to explore grants. We do write a lot of grants within uh, the district to pull in a lot of different funding. I was actually thinking uh, when we were talking about how are we going to be able to keep um, our you know, $40,000 salary for possibly uh, someone to come in and help translate for us and I thought there's a grant for that somewhere, you know So getting on the floor of those grants so that when we do have that money that falls off We don't have a vacuum, but we actually are filling it with something else. So making sure we're staying competitive We're getting out in front of those grants. We're being knowledgeable of those grants as well um, If we actually do look to raise the tax levy, I, I know that's a sore subject. We had that tonight um, a little bit so um, we all know here in the community that the reason that our assessed valuation went up is because of an error that happened within the assessor's office and that was corrected this year. So that is something that, you know, as we talk about taxes in the future, we talked about the fact that nobody wants new taxes in Marshall right now. We understand that everybody's trying to figure out how to cope with the taxes we're going to be paying here in another couple of short months and those effects. So, you know, that's something that's going to have to be down the road, but also something to keep in your mind. So if you're listening to home, we're going to be looking to partner. We're going to be looking for new buildings. And yes, we may be asking you to weigh in and look at taxes. Do not all email me all at once tonight, please. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be looking to re revitalize some internal audit committees and some internal audit controls to make sure that we're being as responsible as we can with the money that we've got going on here. Um, these are also places that we can bring some other people that have some expertise. We have accountants in the area. We have other people that are good with numbers. We have other people who are very vested in this town that we need to make sure we're bringing to the table in those areas. Um, looking for improvements across the district and improvements that we're going to need in a, a lot of our older buildings to keep them sustainable until we can replace them um, are our other buildings which will stay in service, such as the high school, which is our newest building, but still is 40, 44 years old now and looking to be going on 45. That's the new high year. school. That, that is the new high school, as opposed to the old high school, yeah. which is Beaker. <laughs> so, but all those buildings were built before a lot of the technology that we have going on, a lot of the things that we have going on. If you see on our campuses, you see the orange uh, uh, flags or the orange tubes that are sticking up in the ground. That's our new fiber rings that are be going on to help with our connectivity. So there's, there's advances that we're making, but advances have to be made inside the buildings, outside the buildings and making sure that we're physically responsible with the money that we have and that we actually plan and have some reserves left over as well as making sure that we can offer all that we can moving forward. So if I've missed anything in my summary of our meeting, please uh, feel free to weigh in on those that attended. Pretty much covered it all. Yeah, all right. Good, thought it was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. so. it was a great meeting. Um, <laughs> there, there was a lot of good discussion, a lot of good points. As I said, we're going to be looking for involved community members or non involved community members. We've also got to be getting into some of these niches where we don't have representation. Um, we talked a lot about our Hispanic population or our other uh, non white um, community and that they're not really represented a lot when we actually come to these meetings or come to the table. And we're going to make a conscious effort to pull some of those people in. You know, So contact the superintendent, contact myself or anyone else on the board. You know, If you're willing to come and sit down and work on some problems here, we'd love to have some people from various avenues of the community. 
community. Not just the loudest ones, but sometimes the ones that are the most silent that we've been leaving out or are not always getting to. And we want to make sure going forward that we represent everyone and that we come as equal as we can in the district. Moving on, I will move on to new business then. Um, I need to look for approval of the following special education and federal programs contracts. Uh, we have a great circle agreement of purchase of services and a memorandum of understanding. This is something that we do annually uh, to partner with Great Circle. They do have uh, a student population there that does not always make it to our buildings, uh, people that reside with on their campus that still need supports both here from the district and from the teaching services that they offer on the campus. So uh, those, both of those agreements and memorandums were in your packets um, and sent to us by Grace. Does anyone have any questions about those? Uh, and I, of course, need a motion to accept those. Grace, I couldn't find last year's, but did that amount, did that change a whole lot? The one hundred and fifty-five dollars a day. I was going to say it was it was yeah. minimal per day if there was any change at all, wasn't it? Right. And so what we actually pay Grace for all the in here is um, local tax effort from the resident district. Mm -hmm. And then we So we only pay what we receive, basically, yes. in refund. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Charges yes. Right. Charges. Okay. <clears throat> just, just clarification. I'm sure for those at home to make sure that we're not overpaying out of the district for right. um, supporting another entity that we're paying the money. It's basically a pass through to help them with their staff. We do provide some supports and services to their staff as well. So. And it helps us. I move we accept. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Or abstaining? Thank you. Um, next, I uh, will invite Ms. Jones to come up and speak to us about the Back on Track program at MHS. I see her making the way to the microphone, so she is very new to the district, but very seasoned in the efforts of what we're making here on the microphone. So, hopefully, your first day. And she even brought a hand very out. Well. Yeah. I did. I can get some check marks on this the is, uh, evaluation. Yeah, you need to give us time to review if you bring a packet this thing. What? No, I'm just kidding. I'm, no. serious. <laughs> yeah, hey. I'm serious. This, I didn't this, hear one this else. This was, one was in our packet, and we actually have check. talked about this, and we've seen uh, uh, the credit numbers. So uh, just teasing a little bit with Ms. Jones on her first night out. So. Oh, that was good. Thank you. All right, so I did give you a packet um, because I have shared with you the, um, the first page, which is the letter, and then as well as the second page, which is some of the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that I'm asking the board to do is open back up the handbook that you all have approved. Um, because in our handbook it says that um, students will be retained or their designation of grade level will be changed if they're not on track to graduate. And the one thing that we know is that the state of Missouri, um, you have four years to graduate from high school. So it doesn't matter if we're classifying you as a freshman, but you should be a senior. You only have four years to get through school. So one of the things that I think is very important educationally is that we talk with parents about not being on track to graduate. And when I say that, if you have a freshman in high school at the end of their freshman year and they have not passed six credits um, when they could earn seven, um, they are not on track to graduate. Anything less than six credits, you're not on track to graduate as a fresh, as a incoming freshman, okay? And then it just goes up from there. And statistics show us that as kids don't gain credits through the years, they don't recover them by the time they're a senior. And no matter if I classify them, classify them as a freshman or I classify them as a senior, they're still not going to walk across the stage at the end of their four years. And so, one of the things that I'm asking is that we be able to change that wording to um, not on track to graduate. And so this letter that I provided for parents talks a little bit about um, you know, where students should be and if they're not, what can we do to help? Reaching out to our counselors. And one of the things that Dr. Mayer mentioned was after school programs. Um, with the ESSER dollars, I'm asking to be able to run a nighttime school for credit recovery. Um, and with that being said, it would be from 3.30 to 5.30 in the evening. Um, and it would be for students who are not on track to graduate. Um, so they could have, they would be at school all day long, unfortunately, and then they would come to school afterwards to make up those credits. Um, and that would be through our Acellus program with teachers running that. And so trying to get our kids back. We would still offer summer school, 
But as you see the numbers that I provided, which are the same numbers that I provided you in the summer, um, we're talking about a quarter of each class is behind. These, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. These would be online rather than face-to-face? -face. They would be online rather than face-to-face. -face. And one of the reasons for that is um, in the secondary level, it's very hard to get every course to be able to be taught um, through, a certif through a certified teacher. So, you know, teaching four English courses in that time. So it's easier to have teachers that can provide an online, the online platform is there. They're there for help. They're there to help talk through it and work with kids. And so that's why we would choose the online platform. This would, no, this would be no, like, a, no, like a taking the class online with a proctor, for lack of a better term. It would but be. But someone that actually could give you educational reinforcement or even a if, tutor within the proctoring yeah. room. If, if done right, term. that teacher would be in direct contact with that student constantly. Most definitely. Time. And they would be in my building. They would not be at home. Like, they right. would be in seat. Um, and so I've had a couple teachers, because after we talked about, um, or after the welcome back, and Dr. Mary talked about that, I kind of explained what we were, like, what we were looking for at Marshall High School and told teachers that they were interested to please contact me. And I've already had a couple of my core teachers say, hey, I would be interested in doing that at night right. with students. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, they would be there to help students. And we're looking at core content. Electives usually are easy, pretty easy to make up, but core content is what we would be mainly focusing on. Okay. Would there be A plus hours or anything available for some students? Right, I know that people that ask that. Um, that would be a possibility to do some, have some students help with tutoring during that time, which would allow them for A plus hours, for NHS hours, and that kind of thing. Um, in my previous world, I have a lot, we have allowed students, our higher level students, to come in and do that tutoring um, to help out too. So it's just an extra set of hands that they would like. Sure. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also in this packet, I know that um, I've kind of, we've changed some things and I know some of you have gotten phone calls and maybe some emails and some, <laughs> and some of you have children at the school, so you've probably got some text messages today, I'm sure. Um, but one of the things that I shared in the packet um, is the bell schedule, just so you have it, so you know what our current bell schedule looks like at Marshall High School. Sorry. Um, the cell phone policy would be the next page. The cell phone policy did not change as much as our students would like to think it did. It really did not change. Um, the policy is that they're not to be out during academic time, okay? They should not be out. Um, I know some of the questions have been asked to me today um, from parents have qu asked questions about um, some teachers asking them to put them in calculator pockets. Um, our band teachers have done that since sixth grade. I know that there are one set of teachers that do that. So if a student walks into the classroom and their phone is out or they're laying it on their desk, they're asking them to put it in a, in a pocket. Um, and that's something that they have done. I have said to students multiple times today, if your phone is put up, we wouldn't be asking you to get it out. We're not asking you to get it out to put it up in that pocket. So if it's up when you walk in and we don't have to worry about that, you're not getting asked for it, okay? So the, que the, you know, the statement is put them up, turn them on vibrate so you can't hear them, and class happens. You have four minutes between. You can Snapchat, do whatever you think you need to do during that time, put them back up when you walk in the door, and then um, at lunchtime you have that ability to be on them as well for 23 mm -hmm. minutes. So that policy really hasn't changed, just enforcing it a little stricter than it might have been in the past. I have a question for you, backing up to these credits. The class of 22, we got 44 kids. That is, am I reading that right? That's in jeopardy of not graduating? Yes, sir. You're reading that correct. So, so if we got this going, I mean, like soon, soon, um, what do you think that number will be? Well, um, I wish I could tell you I knew what that number would be. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I would hope that we could get down to 10 or 12, uh, you know, I mean, but that's going to be us really pushing them. And what happens is, and I wish I could say this was a problem just here, but it's not. It's across the nation. Um, you know, I walked, had, we had the same issue. The online learning had, was not our friend in education um, at all. And so when I say that, like the distance learning without being, seeing kids face to face. Well, I've been on this board five years and it's the first time I've remember seeing any numbers like that. Right, it is uh, drastic. Um, yeah. It is drastic. And so that is the thing right now. So if a senior doesn't have 19 credits, that means that um, they have not passed every class. I mean, they haven't passed seven credits to, up yeah. until this point. And so you can figure that by the time they become a senior, if they haven't done that statistically, that um, they're so probably not going to do it. Are, you think if a kid gets in there and does what he 
What's the maximum credit you think they could get from this night school that you're talking about? Right. So if we ran night school from 3.30 to 5.30, let's say that we started, I'm just going to say sep September 20th. Okay. That gives us time to get everything set up. We start September 20th. That gives us um, five months, you know, two hours a night, four nights a week. So you're eight hours a week extra on top of that. Um, if students really get in there and get them knocked out, they could get, as long as they're, I mean, they could pass their classes, so they could get all their credits during the school day and maybe four or five more if they really do, if they really work, but they're going to have to work, and that's the thing. So we really have to have that relationship with that kid to really encourage them to say, hey, we, we've got to get these credits done. We really need to pass these classes. Um, one of the next things that we're going to talk about is owl time and owl time procedures. So owl time is put into the program as um, it has been um, time for students to work on schoolwork, okay, work on academics. And we're going to continue with that, but we're also going to make it um, more of an advisory. So if I have a group of freshmen this year in owl time, I will have them as sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So I'm going to rotate with them. In the past, they have not. Um, and so this way, we're building that relationship. They have that one adult parent in the building um, that will say that can stay on top of them, and they can say, "Hey, why? What your grades are? Not, you're falling. Let's get this done. Where do you need to go? Go get some help during this time. Ooh. Let's make sure you're there." Um, and so that's one of the things. It's more of the parent in the building um, and trying to push them. The other thing that um, comes into that is ICAP. Um, and so that is their plan for their education or their career outside of. Um, MHS and so where we talked about that career counselor um, they would go in and help with getting their ICAP ready and looking at those future plans on what they would be doing um, outside of Marshall High School the next one um, is grade expectations um, our grades I know we've heard from the board that um, holding our teachers accountable and if you will notice at Marshall High School I'm expecting my teachers to input at least two grades a week, and that is um, something that I'm holding true to. And I have one of my assistants here tonight um, with me, and we will be checking teachers' grade books, okay, and making sure that they're putting grades in at least two a week. Um, that is a change. Um, that is a change for my staff. Um, and so we've had some conversations. I've had some conversations with staff members on how do we do this, how does this happen, um, and we've talked through some scenarios. and. Um, and so we will, we're going to make this happen. But with that becomes, then the next page, which um, Mr. Wilcoxon is here with me, we have decided that if um, students are not passing an academic class that they are going to miss for an activity, that they do not get to go on the activity, okay? And that is not that I'm trying to take opportunities away from kids, please hear me say that, but academics have to come first. And we have to have them passing classes. And so, um, that is a change, okay? That is something that hasn't happened. And at first, some of the, I know some of the conversation out there was that I had said C's, I did. I'm not gonna tell you I didn't. Um, but the admin team, we sat down and talked and they were like, okay, how about, pa how about we start at passing? This is a drastic change. Mm -hmm. So how about we start with passing? And so I have, we have agreed to do that. Um, SEC is on board, we're on board, we share the same kids. They have activities that our kids wanna go on. Um, and so that has been communicated, and we're all using this statement um, that you have a copy of. Okay? And athletics, when you talk about athletics. Right, so you. It's across the board. So it's all activities and all athletics. If a kid is not passing their seventh hour class and they're going to get pulled out to go to a competition, then they don't get to go, unfortunately, because they need to be there to get the education. I think kids had to leave kids home if they were academically not ready. Well, mm -hmm. that was how many years ago? It's changed a lot. Pretty long time ago. <laughs> right? A long, 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 long time. <laughs> That's all right. Um, next, <coughs> the schedule changes. If you have students in the high school or have been involved in the high school, you know that schedule changes this time of year um, have become a little, they, they are a little crazy, and most time we get um, questions for schedule changes um, for reasons that are not necessary. Because my friend's in this lunch, and I want to be in that lunch with them. Or because I don't really like, I don't know that teacher, but I don't like him after the first day just because I don't know them. And my friend's not in there. And so we have put a process in place for students to be able um, to request a schedule change that are due. They have three days to do that. They have three days to get that requested, and then next week our counselors will work on those. 
but it has to be approval by um, an administrator and there has to be a reason for it. And one of those nine reasons really are the only nine reasons that we would look to change a schedule um, for our students. All right. Sorry, I know it's a lot. Um, technology computers, yay, they are in. They arrived today. Um, so we have, um, our, our computers have, our Chromebooks have arrived. Um, and so they were, we were told by Keeper that hopefully they will be out and ready to go by next week. So we will be able to get all of them out. And so um, what has happened is today we sent home an acceptable use policy as well as a checkout policy um, for our students to be signed by their parents. Um, to bring back to us. We will check out the Chromebooks that we have currently, as well as some streams, and then as soon as the new ones are in our hands, hopefully next Friday, we're crossing our fingers, we're gonna hope for that, um, then we will take those streams back and the new Chromebooks will be in their hands, okay? One of the things that um, we've heard today that I've heard is about using your own personal device. I'm gonna tell you the reason um, I am opposed to that, and it's an educational and security reason. If I bring in my personal device, Harry, I'm gonna use you, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, if Harry brings in his own personal device and he signs into my guest Wi-Fi, um, I can't see what Harry is doing. He could go in and get on something as a student that he's not supposed to be on. I can call um, Keeper and the tech guys and say, hey, can you come, can you see what he's on? But unless we know what he signed in as, yeah. it takes them multiple hours to get that done. If he's on a school device, he has to sign in as his, pers his normal Google um, sign-in for school. And so then, I, it, then it will send me an email quickly that says, Harry is on something he is not supposed to. I can go to his Algebra 1 class and be like, Harry, what are you on? Yeah. I, thought okay. we purchased a, no, sure I thought we purchased something last year that, <laughs> that sent us a report of that kind of stuff. Dr. T? Yes, yeah, securely um, takes, handles our mobile devices. Um, so there's a couple issues there. Um, we have it, and it is set at a basic level securely, even on the guest Wi-Fi. Um, but there, there are other issues, as ranging from virus protection. Uh, so we segment that guest portion off, and we don't monitor that okay. on a regular basis without, like she said, doing some extra. Someone's going to spend some yeah. extra time doing some work into it. So. Right. If I'm, I'm just clarifying because I thought that I remember re yeah. doing something with Right. Him. And securely is the one I was talking about that I can see. If he's on as, him, as his school, then I can see I'm it. i If he's, right. <laughs> um, if he's on as a guest, then I have to search down to who that, the guest name might be because it might not be his name. It might be a parent's name or something that's logged into that computer. So then I have to search that and figure out who that is. I like that. Okay. So that's the technology piece. Can I? And yes, sir. No, I'm just thinking. I'd like to be able to do that. To some of the classes I had today. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Just sitting up back here on their right. laptops. I don't have what they were doing. Right. And last but not least, um, thrill share. If you are a parent of one of our students at MHS, <coughs> you probably got a phone call from me this evening. I know. And if you didn't, um, we'll try to figure that out. But thrill share is a product that we have purchased this year that goes along with our website that we can send out a voicemail. I can send out a voice message to parents. And like today, I talked about the policies we went through, what our new procedure was for um, dropping your students off and such like that. And it comes from our SIS system. And whatever number we have in there is the main number, that's who we get. That's who they get the phone call. So um, you got to hear my voice probably about 5, 35, 45, am I right? Yeah. yeah, that was about right. Yeah, about right. Um, and then I followed it up with an email too. So if you didn't get my voicemail, you should have gotten my email. You would have got my email too. We need to figure that out then. Yeah. I don't need okay. it. She's good. <laughs> so, I don't need to have grandkids. I'm looking for the board um, to approve that we open the MHS um, student handbook back up and we make some of these updates. I am able to send out this letter to our parents, um, ASAP, so that we can start working that process um, so that we can move forward. What's What's Go ahead. I'm sorry, is that the August 25th letter that's on the top, not the August 6th draft that you right. haven't given no, to us that prior? is, I've changed it to, yeah, right. so, okay. yes. And I, it probably would be August 27th for Friday. Right, right. Yeah. that's fine. I'm just making sure that it's this letter that yes. I saw today, not the that letter is. that we talked about no. two weeks ago. Yes. Christy, I guess my, or Mrs. Jones, Ms. Jones, <laughs> Christy, sorry. Um, I guess my question to you would be, knowing that when information goes out, sometimes, and this certainly would cause a parent or a community to rumble and be concerned and right now you know you talked about a 3:30 to 5 30 school but tomorrow when this letter goes home you aren't going to have that set up so what's your plan what's your plan for the immediate when somebody says okay my kid will do this and right. 
So currently we have, the plan is that they can take Acela's classes by themselves at home virtually. Um, it's outside not of their school day. Outside right. of their school day, okay. yes. That is the current policy Sorry. in the handbook now, is that they okay. can take Acela's mm -hmm. classes outside of the school day on their own. Um, moving it into the building with supervision, we know we'll get better results. Um, and so right now, currently, that's what would happen, is they could start them on their own outside of the school day. Okay, mm -hmm. and Acellus is the program, just to be clear, that we've already paid for, mm -hmm. so these are, this is not an extra expense to families to get these recovery credits, correct? That's correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Even though it's above and beyond their extra school, it's above and beyond our school day. It would be no just expense clarifying. to the family. It's Acellus is what we're using um, as one of our distance learning platforms mm -hmm. for the district already, and it's also what they've used in the, that's what they use during summer school and such. So okay. yes, we have it. Yeah. We have purchased those licenses through the end of this calendar year. Next year, we would have to go back in and look and see what our needs were and then right. look to extend that. Yes. So, so if I'm reading <coughs> class of 2023, <coughs> 58 of those students, they can't miss a single credit for the next two years. Correct. Yes, sir, you are very correct. Okay. I make a motion we accept the back on track program. A second. <laughs> just, just, to, just to give discussion, uh, I think this is a, a very aggressive change for us in the district, and you're going to have some bumps going into it. And I think it will be, in the long term, a great thing. I just think that you're going to have a little work ahead. I know t parents have been telling me since we started, why is the gradebook never updated? I guarantee you parents will be ecstatic to be able to go in there and find out what the progress really is. I can find out where my child is or if he's falling off track maybe a little bit and help with that before I actually get the grade at the end of semester when grades were had to be in by the deadline. And I find out that there's been five missing assignments and then that for those kind of things. So there's kind of that shell shock that happens with a lot of parents at the end of the quarter. And hopefully this will reduce that and, and help them keep their students on track as well. So. Well, and I think this is a good, I think this is a good, um, steward for the rest of the district um, when it comes to, to those things, Brian, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, um, overall, you got to look. That's 166 kids yeah. that we are failing. Yeah, it's 166 kids out of roughly probably 850. Yeah. We're yeah. At, we're a little over 800. <laughs> I mean, so, we, we so got you're talking about a very high number. Quick. We're talking about 12%. Yeah. Or something. And, that, and that after that school, that could be tailored if, summer if school. a kid does have a Past job. The graduate. If they couldn't do four days a week, they could do every other day maybe or two. Or if they needed to, they yes, we would work with students. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would expect them to be there at least two just because sure. knowing that we need Absolutely. we need our you know presence with them to make sure that they're and, doing it. And there is going to have to be some thought put into some of these students are actually going to be students who are athletes or people who are in after school practices or things, which are probably going to take up that 3.30 to 5.30 time, but um, we're getting creative. I'm sure you'll get even more creative. So uh, we've had a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor of accepting the uh, back on track program as Ms. Jones presented it, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you all. Um, lastly, we're going to be moving down to uh, substitute teacher pay. Uh, Dr. Mayor had given us some slides and some information on that in the beginning. Um, and where we had fallen off the, the track. Uh, Mr. Smith had asked us to put this back on the agenda this evening because we had talked about it last year. We had granted some kind of one-year extensions and raises, and we thought in order to be competitive uh, that he wanted to revisit that and to make sure that we were staying competitive and bringing um, the people in our community here and that they wouldn't be driving to Slater or Sweet Springs um, for some extra minimal incentives. So. With that said, um, she said that our base rate now is $85 a day. I believe you proposed a hundred and a hundred and twenty-five for long-term subs. Hundred and fifteen. Hundred and hundred and fifteen. Excuse me. Thank you for the correction. I'm now open to look for additional numbers or discussions here at this point. <clears throat> the only thing that comes to my mind is minimum wage is going to go up in January. So we're going from um, eighty-five dollars right now is ten ninety-six. Our minimum wage is ten thirty. That doesn't. That isn't an incentive for somebody to be a sub. If we go to a hundred. Um, that's twelve ninety an hour. If our minimum wage goes to eleven twenty, I think is what it's supposed to go to. Yeah, January, we're, we're still not far off of that. Um, so, does that mean that we're going to be revisiting this again come January? Because we get in this influx, and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. Linda doesn't have anybody again. So, um, you know, sometimes in management and hiring, uh, sometimes you you jump up just to to try and get your people there and lock them in. And Pay so, for what you get. I'm not sure that 
and then when you look at Sweet Springs, who, yes, I understand they're at 116, um, 116.25 is what I figured on their $15 an hour, which is the salary that someone can go and work at McDonald's, which is one block away from our high school. So um, I still don't know that 12.90 is enough. Um, granted, I appreciate our budget. I mean, I understand that we have we have a budget to maintain. How many subs do we have right now, this year? About 20. And last year, I think we had what 16. We started with like 16-ish, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Oh, a little more. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so how many do you think? How many? L truly, how many people do we need to add to that sub pool? Like, I, I have no idea. Yeah. I think we said 10 30? I mean, to have 50 people in a sub pool, is that awesome? 100? Like, what is the? 30, wasn't it? Then, wasn't that the I, I think we had talked about a magic number of like 30 to 40 at 30 one time. 30 to 40? Yeah. yeah, we're running, we're probably in need of mm -hmm. 25 to 30 at least a day. A day? Most likely, that's 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 rough. I, I believe that on the sub 40, list, 40? not necessarily for Dave, but on the sub list, 40. I believe we were shooting for 50. Yeah. Well, that would get us better than that would get us 10 better than that. Okay. So, so what, I, I make a motion that we move to $115 a day for subs and $125 a day for our long-term subs. Second. I think that's a good deal. Got to have people. We got to have people that good people that want the job. Can you tell me the benefit of a long-term sub? Because I'm just, I'm not. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Well, the, really, the benefit is the, the consistency for the kids. Okay. But we have, we have, if teachers go out on maternity leave okay. or whatever, mm -hmm. then then we have the same teacher in the front of the same class every day. Do we have? Do we have? Um, I guess my question would be right now: Do we have any um, long-term subs right now? Yes. yes. And so those people, if we change this today, their pay changes immediately? Or how actually, does that work? Actually, if they are considered, if they're going to be a sub for the entire year, they're considered they're a teacher salary. and they're on teacher salary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, for 37000 right? That's for a teacher, a full-time teacher. But a long-term sub. Well, sub. Well, well, but the, the subs that are going to teach at the high school. That are going, they have a sub certificate, but they're going to be in the teaching spots because they're working on their certification. Maybe I'll have to get you that information, Don. They're not considered teachers. They're considered mm -hmm. teachers, right? Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's my question. Like they, this, this, this change is effective immediately. Is what I'm asking in your budget. It, it will be. Retroactive. We, we can retroactive back to yeah. the first day of school. Welcome, we're still here. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm just asking because I don't yeah. know the yes. procedure. Yeah. Yes, so. And, and what Don was saying is currently just for you at home, we already have three long-term subs within the district on the first day of school. So um, this is something that's going to be going on with us. So currently we have a motion on the floor at 115 for uh, a regular day and 125 for the long-term sub that has been moved and seconded. And is there any additional discussion? Call a question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Or Boom, that's a biggie. It's good work. Thank you. I need a motion now to uh, move towards uh, so closing moved. open session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all. Have a good evening.